What is going on YouTube? It's your boy Spanko and today I'm bringing you guys a second place Phantom Knight deck profile that does not play Adventure, we don't play Scythe, none of those $300 packages, we're just playing Phantom Knight. Now of course not every single card in the deck is going to be a Phantom Knight card, but you guys know what I mean, we're not playing those $300 engines. Now if you guys do enjoy these videos, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh! content. Quickly, just before we do get into the deck profile though, I do want to tell you guys what my matchups were. So it was a five round locals. I ended up playing Sky Striker DPE round one, uh, Virtual World Punk Adventure round two. Uh, my round three, I think was DDD, or maybe it was my round four. I can't remember what my round three and my four were. One of them were DDD, and then my round five, the finals was against Sword Soul. And funny enough, the one time I bricked in the entire locals was in game two against Sword Soul. I opened, well, you guys will see the deck profile. So I hope you guys do enjoy. I don't want to keep this intro way too long. Let's get right into the profile. Okay, so just before we get into this deck list over here, I do want to say that it's not a 40 card main deck. It is a 53 card main deck. Yeah, so there's a lot of cards in here, but it's important to play 53 for a few reasons that you guys will, I think, understand a little bit more when you guys see the deck profile. But you are playing a lot of Garnets and a lot of Bricks, I guess you could say in the deck. And by Bricks, I mean just cards that are really necessary to play in today's format, but you don't want to draw into them, if that makes sense. So you guys, again, will understand when I get into the profile a little bit more, but I came second place with this. I beat uh, Virtual World, Punk, Adventure. I think we played into Striker. I can't remember entirely all my matchups, but we did come second place. We lost to Sword Soul in the finals, and I think it was a pretty close match as well. The Sword Soul player just had the hand traps, the outs, everything he needed to pretty much break my board and out my board. So that's why I came second place. But again, this deck is very, very powerful. You don't need the adventure package, so you guys can save yourself a lot of money in that. And we're not abusing Scythe in this. Yes, you can play Scythe in this, but we're not abusing Scythe. So if you're one of those players that doesn't want to play Scythe and doesn't want to abuse Scythe, you don't have to, all right? So I know that was a kind of a long intro, but I just wanted to explain why I think a little bit more detail, why this deck is really, really fun, and it doesn't play the super expensive stuff that you guys see in today's format. So we're starting off here with triple Phantom Knights of Torn Scales, triple Silent Boots, double Cloak, one Ragged Gloves, as well as one Stained Greaves. So this is the lineup for the PKs. I really, really like this PK lineup over here. I wouldn't change it at all. Of course, we know how good Torn Scales is. We know how good Silent Boots is. We know how good all of these are, right? And I think this is just the best ratio. Stained Gloves, I really Really, really like especially in the mid to late game but sometimes just drawing into this isn't too bad because when you're doing your combos if your opponent has a hand trap what this lets you do is it kind of lets you extend through hand traps so i really like this card so yeah i think this lineup is perfect i wouldn't change this at all and then to round off our pk lineup we are playing triple fog blade one sword as well as one shade brigadine now i will say i did want to play wings but for the event i actually could not find a wings for the life of me so the only thing that i would change with this deck list is just add another wings play 54 cards in the main deck and add a phantom knight wings but yeah i think six traps is really really important the reason for that is this doesn't actually do anything for you in the graveyard but i wanted to play four cards that did something for me in the graveyard so that's why i think wings is a little bit better but again here i didn't play the wings i still came second place so it's still not bad but again these are the ones you always want to be playing they're really good to open as well because opening these mean one you don't have to search into them but two if you open these you can pitch it off something like a torn scales and it gets you an extender in the graveyard right of course and then the breeding is really good because if you open it it's really nice because you get a free extender so this is up for the pks i'm playing i would not change this whatsoever this is perfect again the only thing that i would change if i would change anything is not these ratios i would just add the wings that's it just add the wings because i think these are really important to play and the wings gives you another trap that you can use in the graveyard and wings on the field is actually really really good as well so yeah i would play these wouldn't change any of these out Next up for like the level three turbo stuff, just to get to Cherubini as fast as possible, we are playing triple tour guide. I know a lot of people cut this from PK, but this card alone is one card for cool combo. If you open this card and the combo goes through, and a lot of times you guys will see the combo will go through because we're playing cards to make sure the combo goes through. But if one card just goes through, this is gonna end on an F0 and a DPE plus a fog blade set plus a Bardiche on your side of the field. So it's, it's really, really powerful. So just this one card is full combo and that's why I still am playing it. I know people cut it because they're like, it's always gonna get Ash. It's always going to get hand trapped. Yes, that's true. Don't get me wrong that a lot of the time, if your opponent sees you normal summon this and they have a hand trap, they'll try to stop this. But again, we are playing cards to stop us from losing to situations like that. But this is just way too powerful to not play, right? Like this is one card full combo. And of course, we're playing one graph and one seer as well to complement it. It's so, so good. Like this combo by itself is just so, like literally just one tour guide. You can't not play it. So I like these. Also, these are just extenders as well. If you happen to open one in your hand and you have two level threes already that you can summon, then you can make Cherubini. 
and then you can summon this from your hand to an arrow tree of any points to, and then you guys can continue your combo from there. So drawing these ain't even too bad. And then we're playing one Jackalope and one Suchinoku. I'm not gonna lie to you, I actually didn't want to play these, and I wanted to play other level three extenders, stuff like Junk Forward and whatnot. The reason I decided to play these two was because there are hands where you open like PK monsters or the PK traps with your dangers, and then you're like, okay, well, I don't mind getting these in the graveyard. So then you can go your danger effects. But then on top of that, why these are really good is specifically because they're dark. And what that means is these can let you go into your Bardiche, whereas some of the other ones that you guys will see, well, this one can as well. So your Kagemucho Knight is also dark, so this one can also go into your Bardiche. But other than these ones, nothing else really can because your Psychic Wielders, we're playing two of and we're playing two Tracker, and they're both Earth. So these can't obviously go into your Bardiche. So these are always going to go into a Chiribini or another Link monster that you guys are going into but i am playing two and two that's because etel is now at three and that's why we're just maxing out on these because if you draw one and you can summon one off of the etel and then you can summon the other one with its own effect sometimes so that's why it's really powerful to play two and two drawing them is not bad these are really really good extensors especially with etel at three so that's it for the level three stuff i think this level three stuff is very very powerful i wouldn't change any of this really i think this is really really good again junk forward is another option instead of the dangers but i like the dangers just because it helps you pitch a lot of the cards that you don't mind getting in the graveyard but on top of that they're also dark which can come up and it's really important plus sometimes if they go off properly you can get a free draw off of them so that could be really strong as well now for our last engine over here of course we're playing one dasher one celestial as well as two fusion destiny of course you're not going to not play these by the way if you guys have noticed i've been doing these based off engines more so than i've been doing them monster spells and traps these are just engines but of course yeah you have to play this engine this engine is way too powerful i know dp dp is probably the most expensive card in the deck but the the card is just too good in this deck and celestial is just so powerful as well so yeah you of course have to play this engine so next up we're going into our hand traps and you guys are going to see we're maxing out on a lot of the best hand traps in the format so we're playing triple ash of course triple ogre we're playing two nib one veiler and triple infinite impermanence now you guys might be thinking what are these ratios why are you playing two nib one veiler well like i said we don't want to lose to our tour guide getting hit by a single hand trap such as veiler such as ash such as imperm so what we're doing is we're actually playing these one because they're really good to draw especially in today's format all of these cards are really really powerful but two because you guys are going to see we're playing cross out designator and that pretty much always makes sure our combos go through that's the reason we're playing the one veiler because some people are playing veiler and imperm and some people are playing just veiler some people are playing playing just imperm we're playing three of these ones because these are just the best ones in the format and then i had three more spots that i wanted to play hand traps i really wanted to play 12 hand traps so i decided to play two nibiru and one veiler again nibiru is also really good because a lot of the time you can get into situations where your opponent can nibiru you so of course cross out also stops that cross out will stop the effect veiler and honestly if people are playing ghost ogre ash imperm it's going to stop all of it so we're maxing out on the hand trap lineup one because it's really good when we're going second when we're forced to go second we can obviously stop our opponent from playing and we don't have to lose to some like stupid boards but two it's really good when we're going first because if we do open that cross out it guarantees our combos are always going to go through right so i think these are the perfect hand trap ratio in today's format i wouldn't change this up at all and the best part about it is that ghost ogre is a psychic level three so that means that this is also if you need it to be an extender for you if you summon this off of Itali, you can use it as an extender for our level three but on top of that another really cool situation another really cool thing that comes up is that if you can do your full combo without needing the Itali, right you can set the Itali that's in your hand and then pass your turn on your opponent's turn you can actually end up activating the Itali, summoning a ghost ogre and if you guys don't know ghost ogre unlike some of the other hand traps can actually activate on the field so that means summoning this off of Itali on your opponent's turn is another disruption for you so that's the best part about Itali being back at three now Itali just means that your combos are always going to go through because you're going to have access to something like your psychic wielder and stuff at all points so you have extenders but on top of that it also guarantees that you can also sometimes have another form of disruption on your opponent's turn so even if you don't draw a ghost ogre you can just Itali on your opponent's turn and now this is live on your opponent's turn as a disruption very very powerful card i would not change this lineup whatsoever 12 hand traps this is very necessary in today's format so to end off our list over here, we have some generic spells that we're playing. And that is, like I said, Triple E Telly, very, very powerful card. It's an extender for you. It's a disruption for you. This card is really, really great. Helps you play through hand traps. That's the best part about this deck is that this deck can really play through like two, three hand traps at a time because you have so many disruptions, but you don't want to play through hand traps at the end of the day. And that's why we're playing triple cross out as well as the one called by the grave. You guys can see here that we're literally maxing out on these. And I know a lot of people aren't playing them in today's format. I really don't understand why people are not playing cross out because 
everyone is playing a lot of hand traps in today's format. Hand traps are very, very powerful. And so because of that, cross out pretty much guarantees that your combos are gonna go through. Like if you open this in tour guide, doesn't matter what the other three cards in your hand is, this in tour guide is full combo because you're always gonna have your combo go through. You're always gonna have your combo resolve is very, very powerful. So that's why you wanna be maxing out on these. Then of course, we're playing one reinforcements of the army as well as one foolish burial. Foolish burial is really good as an extender for you since your PKs. I know a lot of people are gonna be like, why are you playing triple cross out? I know it doesn't see a lot of play. I know not a lot of people are doing it, but I'm on it right now because it's so powerful and because people are still playing so many hand traps we're already at a disadvantage because we're not playing the adventure package so because of that we want to be playing this and you're playing 53 cards in your main deck i think it's 53 at least but because you're playing more than 50 cards essentially you're not gonna brick on multiple of these and that's really the best part if you usually want to open one right especially with four of them available the reason i say four is because we have one called by so four cards that protects you from hand traps in a 50 card deck you're not worried about drawing two or three of these right so very very powerful in that sense and that's it really for the main deck Moving on to the extra deck over here, we are playing one IP Masquerina. This comes up here and there. This actually is really powerful when it does come up. So of course we're playing one IP Masquerina. Sometimes you can end your boards on an F0, a DP, and an IP, depending on how many extenders you have, because you have access to something like your Brigadine over here, and that can sometimes just make your IP, which is very, very powerful. So of course you're gonna be playing this. You're gonna play one Cherubini. I mean, this whole deck is Cherubini Turbo, let's be honest. One Phantom Knights of Rusty Bardiche. This card, of course, is your main extra deck monster, the one that you're always gonna be going into. One Unicorn over here unicorn is really nice as well with the ip so you do want to be playing one unicorn also in the mid to late game again because this deck is so powerful you can make the unicorn go into access code talker which i'm going to show you guys right now and this is just such a strong combo right because it's going to be 5300 unicorn is going to shuffle something back and so yeah that's why you want to be playing both of these and then we're playing one apollo of course this doesn't come up too often if i'm being honest with you i don't make this very very often if there's situations where i get hand trapped a bunch of times and i don't have the opportunity to go into verte or something like that then we can go into apollo instead and Apollo can be really, really strong. But on top of that, if you do make your IP, you can actually use the IP into Apollo on your opponent's turn. So that can be very powerful as well. So we're playing one Apollo. Then we're playing one Levier, the Sea Dragon. I wanted to bump this to two. Some people were playing, telling me to play it at two after the tournament. Never really came up at two, but yeah, you definitely want to be playing the one, of course part of your combo it's one of the main things in your combo then we're playing two break sword and so yeah people were telling me hey cut the second break sword to play the second levy that could be an option really up to you whatever you guys want to do whatever you guys think might be better for your locals this was fine for me and the reason i wanted to play the second break sword is because a lot of the time you sometimes use your first break sword just to make your f0 turn one so sometimes i like having the second break sword because you can go into your evil swarm nightmare this is a level four because this card is insanely powerful so it's two level four dark monsters which if you pop your break sword you essentially will always have that with your pk monsters and then when your opponent special summons a monster except during the damage step you can detach an exchange material from this card and change that special summon monster to face down defense position and it's not a once per turn so if this has two materials on it you can pretty much book a moon twice on your opponent's turn which is very very powerful so that's why i wanted to play the two break sword instead of the two levy but really this never really came up for me at any point either because when you're making your full board and if your full board goes off it's just way too powerful so yeah if you really want to cut this for a second levy and then maybe make this into like a down magician for zeus that could be very powerful as well different options you guys can do in the extra deck there's a lot of actually different options so of course we're playing the one f0 because f0 helps you make your utopic future this card is so insanely powerful i always knew this card was good and then when i played it i'm like wow this card is even better than i thought it was this being able to negate a card but also snatch steal an opponent's monsters is so strong actually funny enough against the virtual world player he uses the shooting riser dragon and i actually use the utopic draco at future to negate the riser and then take it and what's crazy is that even if you negate the riser, because it's on their side of the field, they might still have combos. But because you take it with this card, it makes it so that they're losing that like material to go into their synchros and whatever. So this card is very, very powerful in that matchup, of course. And then we are playing one Zeus. Again, if you wanted to play double levy, and this is what I was saying, like if you wanted to play double levy instead of the double break sword, cut the nightmare and then, then make the nightmare into a downer magician. So you have an extra material for Zeus that could come up as well. It never really came up for me, which is why I like this. But then again, this never came up for me either. So yeah, it really you could do anything. It doesn't really change the the consistency of the deck in my opinion and then lastly you guys are going to see yo spanko what is this this is supposed to be a verte i don't have a verte funny enough i was actually borrowing it for the tournament so yeah just imagine this is a verte anaconda because that's how you make your dpe and dpe is just such a powerful card you have to be playing this i wouldn't really change anything in the extra deck outside of maybe changing this for a downard and then maybe playing a second levy depends really it's up to you i thought this was fine for me and so yeah this is the extra deck i really really like it
And then lastly, because this was a second place profile, I'm going to be showing you guys my side deck, but really take the side deck with a grain of salt because everyone's locals is different. So you guys should be building your side deck according to your own locals. So here I'm playing double Gamma Seal as well as one Pancratops. I actually don't think these cards are really great in today's format, but I know my locals. Sometimes you guys can play against a lot of weird decks at my locals. And sometimes these come up and they're really, really powerful against those decks. But if you guys were taking this to like a regional or something, or just like a bigger event, I would probably be playing something more geared towards the meta. This was again, just because you see really weird decks at my local so i wanted to play this but one card i really really did like in the side deck was triple dd crow dd crow has use into a lot of matchups so dd crow first of all is really good into like the eldritch matchup because you can get rid of the golden lord dd crow is really good into the adventure matchup because if they send their water enchantress to the graveyard with like a foolish burial or something then you can dd crow the, the water enchantress and then they can't actually get to the right of artemisia right uh, there's other situations where a lot of people use a griffin to make a synchro material and then they put the griffin back into their deck and then whatever whatever so what you can do sometimes if they have the griffin in the graveyard you can dd crow the griffin there's just a lot of situations in the mirror match this card is really good as well because if if they have a pk that they need to extend their combo you just dd crow the pk there's just a lot of situations where dd crow is really really good against a lot of different decks so i wanted to play three of this and i don't regret it this card was really really good i only saw it once but when i saw it, it was really strong oh also funny enough when you see it against a striker matchup is a one matchup funny enough i saw it in when you see it against a striker matchup you can banish the rays so you don't have to worry about the ray coming back every single turn you can also banish the destroy phoenix enforcer so this card is really really powerful in that sense and then we're playing one Lancia. Funny enough, one Lancia did come up because your opponent always is going to be siding Lancia into PKs in games two and games three. And if you know you're going to be going first in game two or game three, you know your opponent is going to be siding this in so you can't combo. So we are playing triple cross out. So I was like, you know what? Let's play one Lancia. And the one Lancia is just going to be a cross out target for us. And if we do happen to randomly draw it, which I mean, hopefully you know because you don't really want to. But if we do happen to draw it, sometimes it can be powerful on your opponent's turn to just Lancia them depending on the matchup. So yeah, so we're playing the one Lancia just for that. Then we're playing the one Barbar and you guys can laugh at this all you want, but I'm being dead serious when I say this actually won me a match. It was uh, round two, I believe, or round three, I can't remember. I think it was round two and we were playing the virtual world punk uh, player, you know, virtual world punk adventure, whatever that pile mishmash stuff is so we're playing that and we're going into game three he i ended up winning game one really easily game two uh went kind of back and forth but then game three because i was like hey let's check how much time is left and there was like a minute left in the time so i was like all right let's just do our full combos so now i started doing my tour guide combo but instead of summoning the seer off of the graph i actually summoned the bar bar and then you go summon Barbar, make you into your Bardiche, and then you go Barbar effect to burn them. And that actually happened. And that actually won me a match. So that's why we're playing the one Barbar. It comes up a lot, very, very handy. And then we're playing back row removal. My locals likes to play a lot of back row. So I'm playing a lot of back row removal. I think it's pretty important. Eldritch is pretty viable in today's format as well. But my locals just likes to play a lot of stun decks. So that's why I wanted to just max out on these. And then we're playing triple chalice just in case we saw Scythe, but we never really saw Scythe. So this actually never got sided in once. But uh, in theory, it should be pretty good, I guess. If you have droplets, you guys can play droplets as well i just don't have droplets so i'm not playing them but uh yeah in theory this card is really really good into a lot of matchups as well so i wouldn't not play this card it just never came up for me but this is a side deck it was i'm very happy with it the only thing i really would change is maybe these three cards but otherwise the rest of it is really really powerful trust me the bar bar is really really good you don't want to take this out especially when you're playing tour guide game threes this comes up so so often so that is it for today's video i hope you guys did enjoy now i know some of the card choices might seem weird i know i kind of went in depth a lot with why i'm playing the cards that i am but i think it makes a lot of sense in today's format i'm really really enjoying this deck if you guys don't want to spend 300 dollars on an adventure engine but you still want to play a competitive deck you guys can go to locals maybe even a regionals and do well with this i think this is a really cool build you guys should try it out yourselves but thank you guys all for watching if you guys did enjoy make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh content i'm happy that i got to go to locals I'm happy that I got to come second place and hopefully soon guys when I get my schedule going when I'm done with school when I'm done with everything we're going to be going hard on this channel you guys are going to see a lot of good content so thank you guys all for watching I appreciate every single one of you and with that Spanko signing out peace